Right, Graham. Has there ever been a more eventful night in Cage Warriors history than what we had tonight? We had just about everything, didn't we? Yeah, I think we've had uh, we've had underdogs win. We've had champions lose belts. We've had blood bats. We've had fights called off because of blood bats. Um, I don't think you could have put any more narrative into the ending of a night of champions like at the Apollo than tonight. Are you? I'm oh, sorry. I was just. Oh, saying, are oh. you? Are you happy? Under the circumstances, are you satisfied with how it was handled, the main event, and, and the fact it was finished the way it, it was? Because it was yeah. becoming a little bit farcical. You know, yeah, it? It, it, it was getting to a stage where the guys just couldn't compete. Yeah. You know, they, 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 were, they were trying to get their, their footing to throw punches, they were slipping, um, they were just bleeding more and more and more. And as Mark called me in, he was looking for me cage side, I jumped in, he's like, look, it's got to stop, and I'm like, I'm with you. To stop the fight, call it, they can do it again. You know, lift the fight another day. You know, it's uh, those guys took holes out of each other. Uh, and I would, I would be happy for the UFC to do that rematch in Copenhagen. It's fair, I think, I think both deserve it. Um, you know, Nicholas has put in a, a warrior story in his career. Ross is still unbeaten. They put on a show tonight for millions. and. I think for the first time in the history of Cage Warriors since my reign, we've had a fight stop because of it. Because of just, there's just too much blood, we just couldn't compete. So yeah. Yeah, Graham. Yeah. So you've been in charge now in residency for about four or five years. Through the last 18 months, we've had three biggest keepers cards ever, plus the amateur tournament, the Grand Prix. What can you do next? Because it seems every time you do something, <laughs> it's just elevated to the next next level. Just two minutes later, <laughs> we'll find something. Don't worry, we'll step it up. Um, I think uh, next step for you guys is we're going to give you a one-night tournament. We've got a um, we've got a belt to sort out, and uh, I think pretty soon we're working on it. I think pretty soon we're going to have a, a four-man one-night tournament for that belt. We also saw that during the week um, it was. A bit of a twist back between yourself and a certain Irish coach. Um, that hasn't put a damper on the team in that that's a point. Not at all, not in the slightest. This is all a bit of fun for me. You've got, um, you were just saying you're happy to see Dolby have the, re you know, the rematch up in Copenhagen for UFC. How do you feel? You know, you're producing some of the best fighters that the world's ever seen come from this organisation. You know? How does it feel? We, what number are we up to now? Are we getting up to uh, nearly 100 fighters moving over? Yeah, we're getting close to that number. Um, we, we embrace what we do. You know, we, we've, we've built uh, an organisation and a platform which is kind of, guys can't go from community halls going 4-5-0 or five and, oh, and go straight into the UFC without fighting on some kind of show in between. And we're, 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 that, we're that show in between. We give them the same size octagon, we give them the same lights, the same cameras, we give them a decent enough crowd, they're treated professionally backstage, they've got the hand wrappers, they've got the cutman, They've got schedules they got to adhere to. They've got the VTs. The only difference is the, the size of the crowd. So it's kind of community hall, 500 people, uh, a hall that's just not even lit with no rig. Cage Warriors, similar to the UFC without the, the mass numbers, UFC. So um, we're happy what we do. We embrace what we do. And we're happy to put more in there. Fantastic. Thank you. Hey, uh, could you give me the on the James Webb fight and the decision. Yeah. Um, I'm talking to Thias Frederick, who is super strong. He, <laughs> he made some um, reversals and got out of some positions that James Webb had him in that were mind blowing. His strength is phenomenal. Uh, the fact that it was a draw, I was surprised that when I was standing in the cage, they wanted to say it's a draw. Who did you think won? Um, I thought James might have edged it. I didn't think by much, but I thought he might have edged it. He had a lot of Especially top positions. Yeah, I read a lot of pop, uh, top decisions, uh, positions. Um, he had a point deduction there as well. So I thought he might have edged it. And when I said it was a draw, then, you know, it's another rematch we have to make. So we'll see when what When do you goes. see the rematch at the end? I don't know. We'll, <laughs> we'll take a couple of days off <laughs> and then we'll, we'll talk to the guys and see where they're at. Who do you think's the biggest winner from tonight? Let's just be Yeah? Yeah. No one gave him a chance. No, everyone thought Martin Hamlin would run through him. Um, the first round of that fight showed Medeskis was in there to take that belt. He didn't want to give it up too easy. Mm -hmm. Biggest fight of his life. Uh, and he took on uh, a talent of the wrestling pedigree of Martin Hamlin. 
everyone has Martin tipped to be in the UFC um, on, on, the, on opening. Mm -hmm. And uh, for Medesca to take that win, I think mean, that's the biggest win tonight. And John Marvin. Yeah. Those two. Those two are. They'd, they'd be the top two of who are the biggest wins. Two guys who, on paper, shouldn't have won. Mm -hmm. And they did. So, yeah. so, yeah. I was just going to say, you talk about um, what's next for Cage Warriors. You mentioned the one night tournament. We spoke in the lead up to the event and talked about out of the box thinking and doing different things. We didn't catch it on the feed upstairs because the feed was cut, but I understand you mentioned there's going to be an invite only show on September 1st. Mm, six. September 6th. September 6th. I was giving <laughs> wrong information. Yeah, yeah, um, okay. Could that be along the lines of what we discussed in the interview where mm -hmm. you could be heading over to the Apex in Las Vegas and holding something there? Uh, that's a little bit down the line. <laughs> uh, but we are, it'll be London. It'll be London. It'll be, it'll be a London show. Yeah. Uh, we're putting the card together at the moment. We just finalise everything. We've got a few documents to sign, and uh, there'll be a 450, maybe 500 strong invite-only event this time. What's the thinking behind that? Because obviously, normally it's a spectator sport, isn't it? And it's about pulling the fans in and generating an atmosphere. Yeah. It's the whole package. It's what's going on in the cage and the atmosphere outside the cage. With an invited crowd, it's like to be quite a different vibe. But obviously, there's a there's there's a theory behind it, so what's the theory? The theory behind it is we don't want to have a roster of fighters and not be able to keep them busy. And venue availability for the last quarter of the year is very, very slim. So there weren't any venues that we could have grabbed hold of that would have made sense for us to go into. So we thought we've got a roster of X amount of fighters. If we don't get another show in, in the last quarter, there's going to be a lot of guys sitting around. And that's not what I want to do. I don't want to sign guys to the organization, promise that I'm going to build them, and then not be able to give them fights. But that's not us. Um, so we've gone out of our way to invest into something that's going to give us a decent size TV show, <coughs> which gets us at least 15, 16 of the guys um, in our thing to fight and, and keeps the roster active. I don't, I don't want a roster of a lot of guys sitting there screaming, uh, I've signed you and not get a fight. Yeah. It's my job to keep them busy, and if that means doing a compact show where we build it up and make it big for TV, um, and our broadcasters and our broadcast partners around the world, then that's what we're going to do. Yeah. You said this week that um, you know your place, like in the combat sports world, is like a building platform for these fighters to you know, give them the spotlight, turn them into stars, and then they go on and become bigger stars elsewhere. Do you think with a card like tonight, where there's obviously going to be a lot of media eyes now who weren't in attendance, there's going to be a lot of attention on the performances and the spectacle of the whole thing, do you think that the image of Cage Warriors might change down the line, or are you still happy to provide that you know, nurturing, building platform for the fighters? Yeah, we're happy, we're happy to. Like I said, there's no in between. You, you, can't, you can't take your guy from a community or a fight in front of 300 of his fans, um, and then stick him into a 20,000 seat to, uh, arena, sure. live TV, and expect him to, to run at it. They're gonna freeze, and the lights are gonna get them. So there's gotta be somewhere in the middle. There's gotta be, a, there's gotta be a, a step up, and a gradual, organic step up for these guys to develop and become future stars. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they go from that community or they go to the arena, and before you know it, the career's over. Too fast. They're, yeah. not, they're not going back at all. So having that time to develop, um, we feel it is our niche to develop these guys and get them to go into the yeah. Um, the only trouble that we're going to be talking about will allow me to be back like that. Any any names flying around flying ahead or is this something super safe? There's names. There's names flying. <laughs> the only problem is the names that are flying I haven't spoken to yet. So like I said, we'll take Monday, maybe Tuesday morning on, we'll have a little gathering on Tuesday afternoon at Cage Wars HQ. We'll look to speak to those people this week, who we believe will go into that. Um, we haven't done a one-night tournament for a while. So I'm kind of 50-50 on one-night tournaments. I like the excitement of them. But nine times out of 10, the guy that would have wanted that on a normal title show probably won't win it on a, on a, on a tournament because if he's an injury in the first fight, the reserve gets brought yeah. in. And but then somebody comes out as the knight shining armor, and the guy probably wouldn't have had a up to that would be a champion, so it brings, it brings an added excitement and element to it. Yeah. How many rounds were 
we'll probably do what we did before, so there'll be two rounds. If it's draw after the two, then there'll be a third. Um, but if there's a decision on two, then there'll be a second. I wonder if you had a word about uh, Mark Goddard. You know, we don't have an official uh, regulatory body here in the UK, so you have to self-regulate, so the staff you have is super important. Mark had a pretty busy day tonight, uh, or, you know, a, a very busy night. Um, how important is it for, for, for a promotion leader to have a senior referee like that handling those, handling those occasions and, and being, a, being a senior figure in there when, when you need it? Because, you know, it's a pretty unusual set of circumstances as well. With, you know, with the James Webb fight, we had the, the issue of spike or no spike, and then there was one that was obviously definitely a spike after. Mm -hmm. Then we had the main event with all the blood and everything. So how valuable is it to have someone like Mark Goddard who you can call upon for these shows? It's, it's something you have to have. You know, any any organisation or small shows that are that are doing events um, is wanting to help the sport grow and to bring people in who want to be referees or who want to be caught in a little shadow and slowly release them into live action. Um, but to have the likes of Mark, Rich, and Leon, all UFC caliber reps, it, it's something that I've had implemented from the very beginning back in 2010. Uh, we've taken a few people in where we've um, progressed them through as referees, but we've always had a senior, a senior ref um, on Cage Warriors. And I've said from the beginning, back in 2010, uh, with my staff, we always looked to have somebody linked to the bigger show on our staff to help with those decisions because there were people coming to me that, that day tonight about some of these decisions, and I was like, I've got to talk to my guy, he's, he's the man. There's still things that I've got to be correct about. You know? I don't think anybody, even anybody in this room, knows everything about any detail in this sport. But there are things that you would kind of scratch your head on or question yourself. So to have that knowledge is, for, is, is something that I should get the organization to have. Yeah, great. Uh, so obviously, tonight we're sort of, you know, we, we found out that it's going to be one, uh, one day tournament. We also found out that there's another four Birmingham card for so. I know there was a Q&A session on the Cage Warriors Instagram page. Uh, someone asked about you know, what shows would we get. I think it's been to the Sweden and uh, a couple of places as well. Uh, would we get a full calendar sort of soon released? Yeah, um, like I said, there's two shows that we've confirmed. The Sweden one will be happening and the Invite one will be happening. And I think that would, that may finalise the rest of the year. Uh, maybe one more, but we're still working on the details. The logistics of putting all this together, fighter availability, injuries, uh, trying to schedule in tight fights, people not available. So all the pieces of the puzzle have got to kind of fall into place. Uh, it's not an easy task, but um, so far it's working okay. So yeah, we, we should have Sweden confirmed and an announcement about both those shows coming soon. Yeah. We also saw that uh, unfortunately in Gary's fight got sort of can, uh, can due to uh, an opponent yeah. failing to make the medical. Um, he wants to be rebooked for Liverpool. I spoke to him. Is that going to be against uh, Teo again, or is that going to be against a new opponent? We work on that. We work on that. We'll see, we'll see what goes. Okay. And what do you think of Sam Creasy's performance, and what's next for him? That's two failed title bids now. Yeah. Where does he go from here? Tough show for Sam. Huh? Um, I don't know. We'll have a chat with Sam. See what Sam wants to do. You know, that's, that's his decision at the end of the day. We we we'll go back and have a few more uh, fights against a few more Europeans. I want to fight the business very soon in the UK. Sam's kind of beat everybody up that's there. So um, we'll see what he wants to do. You know, we just got to let him digest and get his feelings on everything, and we'll speak to him Wednesday or Thursday. I usually give the guys three or four days to let the emotions wear off and I'll pick the final. Graham, we've got some French fighters tonight. Uh, three wins out of three for Morgan Charrier. You had the whole round of course, Samir Fayed in the UK's Royal Flower Champion. Big news coming out of France this week. The sport's going to be legal in January of next year. Is that something that you're looking to uh, set up? And if, if so, how long do you reckon the timeline is before you actually manage to get something sorted? Very ASAP. Yeah. You can go straight away. Yeah. We're already on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd like to hear. We're already on. <laughs> it's already in the framework. We've already um, spoken about venues. Um, we're on it. And we'll be there with the first ball. How excited are you for that? Very. Um, we like going into new markets. You know, if you look at the. If you look at the events over the past 10 years, I got accused of having a dartboard of the countries around the dartboard, and I close my eyes and throw the dart to see what lands in the door. Um, but uh, yeah, the dartboard doesn't exist. We go to places strategically, and 
defines his honor list. We've already, we've already got the, the framework in place. Yeah. Can you give me your thoughts really quickly on the flyweight division as a, in general? Obviously, we've seen in the UFC it's being bandied all over the place. We think it might be safe, but we're not entirely sure. Scott Coke has said that Bellas were aren't particularly interested in doing one. Um, how, how do you see it progressing now in terms of the general MMA industry? It's a tough one. I mean, you can't build divisions unless there's people there to build divisions on. Um, and it's hard to build a division when you've got maybe one guy who's either has had 15 or fights and the rest of the division are back at twos and threes making debuts and stuff. So um, I, don't, I don't know where it's going to go globally, uh, but I know in Europe it's very, very slippery. Mm. Do you think in general it would be a safe advice to say to fighters that maybe you should consider moving up? Yeah, the problem is a lot of these guys are not 145ers either. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think on the Cage Warriors roster, a lot of them that we have, the 125ers could easily compete at 125 or 145 in Europe. Um, but we, we need to do a bit of digging to see what's left of that 125 division. Sure. Um, I don't have a single one tonight. Um, 125, but now who's left in the fight? Yeah. You know? Um, so we'll see. We'll see. We have to do some digging and see what works. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Good? Yeah. Thanks for coming, Thank guys. Thank you very much. Enjoy the night. Cheers. 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 Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, home safe. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, do we know if. Um, Is Toby coming down? Find out now.